Welcome to Lessons in Life and Love with Rihanna Milne, where we show you how to have the positive mindset for success in all life areas so you can grow beyond difficult transitions and evolve from those challenging moments that may have influenced your past but will not define your future. It's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve as we teach you the exact skills needed to attract and keep a lasting, emotionally healthy and conscious relationship. Now, please welcome your host, certified life dating and relationship coach, trauma professional, and best-selling author, Rihanna Milne. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 13th show of Lessons in Life and Love live radio show airing every Monday night from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I am your host and love coach, Rihanna Milne, coming to you live on BBM Global Network. And you can also find the show now on iHeart, iTunes, Spotify, Spreaker, TuneIn, and the list will go on. You can find all the edited podcast versions on my website, LessonsInLifeAndLove.com, and on Spotify. Of course, you know I'm on a mad mission to change the way the world loves. I'll be talking to you all about how to have emotionally healthy, evolved, and conscious love and how to avoid the toxic, painful, traumatic relationships, which just seem too prevalent today. I'm all about helping you transform your life into one that you're passionate about and how to have the love that you deserve. I bring on phenomenal guests to help us reach that mission. And tonight I have a great guest. He'll be on in about 10 minutes. It's my good friend and men's consultant and coach, Rich Salenza, author of wingman the ultimate guide to getting the woman of your dreams i'll tell you he's got so much good information and we are going to give great info for the guys and the girls tonight everybody be on your toes rich and i are sure to have a lively conversation we have done this before on my tv show and i loved having him as a guest hang tight and i want you to write down the phone number because you can call in your questions tonight at 866-451-1451 that could be a question for me or for rich and don't be shy change your name change your town we don't care we're just here to help you any way that we can when you call in you'll get my very nice engineer abraham just tell him you're there and you have a question for me or for rich okay and that's it we're going to dive in love angels and transformers we are going to start tonight out by talking about qualities needs and requirements because these are really important to understand and define before you can have that emotionally healthy partner you've got to know what you're looking for kind of like a road map and i like this quote from Samuel smiles. It's we learn wisdom from failure much more than from success. We often discover what we'll do by finding out what we'll not do. And probably he who never made a mistake never made a discovery. That's how I started my whole research on past childhood trauma, emotional triggers, traumas, and how that impacts adults. 90% of us in life and love. That is the premise of the whole program, helping people overcome their past to have an amazing today and future. Everyone really does need a well-defined list of requirement needs and wants to feel that level of happiness and contentment in their love relationship. It's really important to have that vision. It's an internal image of your desired outcome, that perfect partner for you. And I have to stress, nobody is perfect, but it helps to know exactly what you do want and what you don't want. So that when it comes to meeting people, you can make an informed and educated choice. And when your vision's off track, you feel anxious, stressed, depressed and when it's on track you feel motivated and excited to be out there and date you feel confident content and peaceful and you're very careful not to hurt anyone's feelings or reject anyone and your vision helps clarify your purpose not only for yourself your life your reason for living and into your own personal power and success and the difference you make in the world as well as with that partner that you choose to go forward in life with because if your love partner doesn't compliment you on your purpose purpose or in this vision for your life, you're not going to feel supported. You're going to feel empty and anxious and always question the relationship. This defined vision is important to help you attract that exact type of partner that you want. And let's start out with requirements. Requirements is the top of the pile. That's the most important thing. Requirements are the standards that you feel you must have in a quality mate. And they're necessary to fulfill that vision of the ideal mate. And a testimony requirement would be if it were missing, the 
relationship definitely would not work for you. For example, if you were a lady in your 30s and you definitely wanted to have children, one of the things you would be doing on your dates is asking the gentleman on the very first date, are you a man that would like to be a father? And that's a simple yes and no. If he hems and haws and says, well, yeah, maybe, I don't know if she really wants to, I guess. No, that's not strong enough. That's a yes or no question, my friend. And that is a non-negotiable. My client, Scott, out in LA, he was like, must love dogs. That's it. His dogs were his kids and his partner did not like dogs and that would not be the partner for him. There are different requirements that are important to you. Some can seem silly to other people like must love dogs. Mine is I must love to dance. And there's, of course, more important requirements that involve lifestyle, children, financial or future goals, maybe religion or spiritual beliefs and your character traits or values. So here's a few examples of must have requirements. You should define at least eight to 10 of these so that you know is your partner that you're looking for have these things. And I'll name a couple for me that are important that might help you as well. One is addiction free. Okay, so important to me. Family oriented, a good parent and love of children because I'm a mother and I adore my girls and my grandchildren. So family love and bonding is very important to me. Financially responsible and secure because that's something that I am and I would not want a man that does not have his life together. Someone who is honest, has integrity, intelligent and educated, kind hearted, respectable, self-confident and definitely has a sense of faith or is spiritual because that's important to me and the way I live my life. Successful and proud of their accomplishments and of yours and supportive to your feelings, your goals, your dreams, and that their values are sound and they are trustworthy. Now, those are about 10 of my top ones. So come up with your own list that are important to you. And if they're not there, like must love dogs or must love to dance, then you're going to be sad in your relationship and you're going to find yourself compromising all the time. Risky personality traits that could be problematic could be active addictions, history of cheating, the tendency to have been abusive, in debt or poor credit report or scores, narcissism, and that would come out in the first couple of dates, and mental health problems or mood disorders. And normally people who are sociopathic are very good at hiding their mood disorders. It's usually about 90 days in. This is why we call it the 90 days rules, to be careful with intimacy, to make sure you know who is in front of you before you get too close and too involved. So it's good to start as friends and really get to know each other. Now, needs are something else that you want to require. Needs are somewhat flexible with a discussion of various alternatives. Issues are unmet needs, and they always occur in relationships. And I do educate my clients on how to work through their issues. And I don't like to call them fights. They're just discussions because you are two different people with two different opinions of what you like and not like and want to do or not do. And it's important that you know how to negotiate and talk through your issues with proper communication. This can be expressed and met and the relationship can be successful at that point. Conflict only occurs when needs cannot be met or negotiated or your partner does not have an open mind to try to help meet your needs. And there's two different types. There's emotional needs and it's all about feeling loved and accepted in the way that we need to feel secure and cherished. And remember, a woman's number one need is security. That's from cave woman brain. Brain. And the caveman brain, the number one thing he goes for is attractiveness to procreate the race. I'm curious to see what Rich has to say about that. <laughs> Looks are big for the guy. But you can feel or give love by receiving gifts, being physically touched, spending quality time, words of love or affirmation, acts of service and kindness. It's important for you to know how you want to be loved and what your partner's love language is. And emotional needs are slowly uncovered with time and true quality relationships really require that mutual mutual trust factor where each of you can share and meet each other's emotional needs. That's very important. With respect shown and safety given and the capacity to tap into each other's emotional intimacy needs, this is when love can last a lifetime. Some good examples of emotional needs are the need for affection, empathy for your partner. You can feel their feelings. You put yourself into their shoes, loyalty, nurturing, patience, 
And when you're trying to share your opinion with someone, I always say, twist the partner. It's like, would you like it if I did that to you? And people that are impulsive often do acts that are very unkind to their partner without thinking. That's a type of partner that would often break your heart. The second need is a functional need. And this is the routines that occur in your life to fit the comfort and the vision that you desire. It really talks mostly about daily events like chores and parenting, how to handle your finances. And if you don't have agreement about how these things occur, these functional needs, you're going to feel a lot of stress or anxiety but the relationship could work. However, over time, if something functional doesn't get met, let's say uh, one partner uh, wants to take care of the bills and they are repeated to be late in being paid, that's going to cause a lot of stress and conflict. To be successful, again, you have to negotiate and work through each partner's functional needs, routines, and habits so that they feel that their opinion is important. So you win some and you lose some in love. So you got to be open-minded to what your partner's needs are. Some functional needs are being an excellent co-parent, being helpful around the house, being neat and clean and organized with your own things. Don't be a child to your partner. As soon as that happens, for example, a man is sloppy around the house and the woman's picking up. Now she becomes your mom. And once a woman becomes the mom to her man, she totally loses is attraction. Trust me, guys, you know, you want to be neat and clean on your own and share in the household chores. You are the partner and a woman will be very appreciative of that. And the last thing you want to define are your wants. I want to do this, but if we can't, it's not going to kill me. That's what a want is. That comes to entertainment, pleasure, energy, enjoyment, and that can change over time. Again, being open-minded to what type of fun you want to do together. Taking turns is important. It's good if you you share the same type of music, hobbies, and activities so that you have a lot of joy and fun in your life. Some of the ones could be enjoying beach and ocean together, Broadway shows, comedy clubs, dancing, travel, walking, biking, hiking, things like that. When defining your requirements, needs, and wants, you want to be careful not to be seduced by the partner's good looks or something else and not put enough value on these three items and instead only falling in love due to chemistry. Remember, looks can be superficial and fade with time, and they're going to be some of the least important items on your requirements for a happy relationship. Your perfect partner has to make you feel cherished, loved, and secured, uh, accepted, and you want to be proud to be with them. Look for love and honor from a man or woman through their personalities, their values, their ability to communicate, stable moods, how they treat you and others, and how they make you feel. These are the most important traits of the loving partner. So now I want Rich's take on this. I'm going to introduce Rich Salenza. Hi, Rich. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great, great. I'm going to give a little bit of introduction to our listeners of who you are and your background, and then we'll have a lively conversation. Rich was born into the fashion nightclub and entertainment industry. His whole family was involved with it almost a century ago when they were producing and designing high quality clothing starting in Italy. And his family's factory was in Chicago. And then his father became very active in clubs and restaurants. So Rich decided to go into modeling and used to help advise models on their careers and fashion, how to get into acting, and then he became a writer, director, and producing some short and feature-length films and commercials, and he encountered more and more people who needed practical, professional advice in the fashion and entertainment industry, and he decided to open up his own consulting firm. Rich realized what his male clients really wanted was advice on how to meet and score beautiful women, how to have a relationship with a woman of their dreams. And that's what his book Wingman is about, the ultimate guide to having the woman of your dreams. He wrote that after he wrote the Models Bible. Rich and I have that in common too. We both share a background in fashion modeling and the joy of the talent industries as well. Both of his books have received great reviews and you'll have to check them out for sure. But he has dozens of tips on where to meet and how to behave around women. His moves aimed at attracting beautiful and intelligent women and some good advice too. I asked Rich to come on because I told him I am also having a women's event. It's called the VIP Transformation Experience and you can hear all about it. And he will be one of my specialized coaches coming in to work with my women because I thought no better a person to hear some advice from a guy that consults and coaches men on how to find love. So he knows the guy's psyche, what they want, what they don't want, um, the do's and don'ts of 
of the first date, what makes relationship last, how do we deal with rejection and ghosting? So these are the questions I wanted to ask Rich tonight for both my men and my women. Again, welcome. So Rich, I think it'll be a little easier to start you out with some advice for the guys. And since I do have some male listeners, what are, would be the top three concerns that most of your men come to you for and how do you help them with those? Well, a lot of men want to know why they never had luck with women and they don't know why. And I think a lot of women go through that as well, right? Yes. And I think most people in generally only look at things from their side of the coin. A lot of men are lazy. I hate to say it. <laughs> and to a certain degree, and I think this goes for men and women, they feel like they're owed something, right? You know, mm. or they're a victim or they kind of fall under these circumstances. Why, why not me or why haven't I found the one? But I always say, if you look at your door, you know, no one's knocking at your door trying to get in to meet you, usually, right? Because the truth is, you usually don't put the effort into it. And usually most people, especially men, don't know exactly what they want. They usually know they want a beautiful woman, but they don't even know how to attract a beautiful woman, nor do they actually know how to, I guess you could say, put themselves, like I always say, in the right place at the right time. What happens with a lot of men is they usually like who likes them which I usually, I think is brutal, but the truth is a lot of times they're not really willing to go out of their way to figure out what type of woman they want and then put themselves in a position to meet that woman, right? So if you want a specific woman, let's just say you want somebody who fits and somebody who does this and that and this, you have to start surrounding yourself with those type of women. You have to go to events. If you like yoga, for instance, start taking classes, go to conventions, start meeting those type of women that do that type of workout, for instance. I'm just using for an example. But a lot of them won't do those things. They're going to just think they're going to walk in their local bar or maybe possibly meet them at Starbucks hypothetically or somebody's going to introduce them to them. The reality is the only one that's really going to get you the woman that you want is you. You just got to okay. for one kind of fear of going. And there's also fear involved, obviously, because most men are afraid because they've been getting rejected from majority of their life, which is understandable. But that's do they like when women come up and say well. hello or do they think that's too forward? I think in this day and age, men would love that, but that's very far and few between. Truthfully, because I, I do coach my clients in an exercise. I say, just say hello. Well, people are out of bars because they want to meet people. They're not standing there because they want to be there alone all night. Not usually. I have had a lot of luck personally and so have my people by learning just to say hello and start a conversation and they get to meet some wonderful people. I coach men too. So this is an exercise I have taught to men and not come up with a cheesy line. You don't need a line, right, Rich? You just something sincere, something of that's going on. Like, like, oh, wow, what a great game, or isn't it a gorgeous night, or winter's finally coming, it's cooler in Florida today. Something generic. It doesn't have to be some amazing line. Well, I think more men nowadays, younger men, are becoming more and more introverted, obviously, because of technology. Our generation ah. can talk, I think, and more socialize in a bar environment, restaurant, or even meeting people socially. I see it all the time when I travel. People will talk to me at my age demographic, but if you look at most men and women that are younger, they're usually just looking at their phone right? Or they're looking down in their mat yeah. or they're looking at their iPad. That's what I'm saying. You're being unconscious. You know, when you're conscious, you are looking, you're up and your eyes are up and you're really aware of your environment because everyday people are, could be the one. It's not like you have to wait to go to a place to meet the one. That one could be at the supermarket or at the gas station as you're filling up your car, you're just having a chat with them. You know, I could somebody meet on the beach. So when you meet in a parking lot, I happen to meet two boyfriends that way, one on the beach, one in a parking lot. So, I mean, it can be anywhere. And I agree with the younger people all in their phones. It's ridiculous. They're missing great opportunities to meet some wonderful people. I do, though, think they're much stronger. They have a stronger presence online and have a, I guess they have a lot more, I guess, how would I word it to be appropriate? They have a lot more balls, I guess, to say, especially men online, because I think a lot of mm -hmm. people are used to corresponding through social media or texting, good and bad. Right. So you'll a lot of times see them more comfortable doing that than personal, because if a woman does hypothetically walk up to you and start talking to you, most men are thinking, what does she want from me? Or is this somebody who wants to be my friend? <laughs> or like there's some type of confusion. And I think because that usually doesn't happen to men for the most part, unless maybe you're extremely wealthy or handsome or famous for that matter. So that's something, too, that men, I think, wouldn't be, you kind of catch them off guard unless you're in a bar environment and everyone's drinking, having a good time. And people are asking yeah. one another to dance or things in that nature. So is there some definite do's or don'ts for dating when you're out trying to meet somebody? Uh, I think there's a tons of do's and don'ts when dating. For one, I don't think necessarily when you first meet someone, you should actually even immediately ask them out on a date. I think you should first just kind of find out what type of person that is. 
You know, mm-hmm. I think uh, asking them to meet you with uh, a group of people, which could be your friends, or you just actually going to have a cup of coffee with them first before you actually go out to dinner with them. Um, and I definitely, if you meet somebody, I would definitely research that person now more than ever nowadays. I know that may yes. be considered stalking, but I definitely don't think going to meet a woman or taking somebody on a date that you really don't know and hanging out with her, putting yourself in that position, I think it's kind of risky nowadays. I really I, I agree. Somebody vouches for that person. But on the do's and don'ts, really, with my opinion regarding dating, it's just to have fun. I think most people go on them and it becomes an interview or an interrogation, I call it, where somebody mm-hmm. you're just kind of... They're really there to just, it's just not fun, I think, a lot of times. A lot of people bring their own baggage and insecurities to the date or everyone has their own problems. We don't need to hear yours. And I hate to say that. I don't care (laughs) if you're young, you're middle-aged, or you're older. You just got to really think about that. A lot of people, what they're talking about usually isn't that interesting, especially about their past or what has happened to them. So they really got to keep an eye on that, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, you don't want to bring up a partner and the bloody aspects of your divorce. You know, I mean, I always tell my person, look, fell in love with your partner for a reason. You married them. If it didn't end well, at least talk about the positive things and it just didn't work out and you hope they're happy. So we traveled well together. We had a good time. We had amazing kids together and I hope he's happy. That's all you need to say. You don't have to go into a bunch of details. I also tell the women to make sure you get a last name before you meet someone do meet in public, you know, do check them out. When I was dating, it's definitely like, yes, here's my first name. Here's my last name and yours, because I don't want to meet someone whose last name I don't know. It's very important. And most people who are business people are on LinkedIn. Now you can find something on Google search about them. Right. I agree. And I I think, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times too, people, how would I say this? Like, don't get caught up. I think a lot of women and men become serial daters now where they just kind of, they're multiplying different dates are going on to all the time or they're sometimes even taking advantage of women, sometimes taking them to certain places, trying to see if they could get something off of them. They're just kind of a number. Yeah. Um, And one thing I talk about women all the time, and I think they get caught up sometimes, we may get into this in the future, is feeling guilty sometimes after dating somebody after a few dates because, say, the man keeps picking up the check. And I think almost subconsciously they feel like they have to return a favor in some way or another. And sometimes that may lead to sex, which I tell people all the time, split the tab, especially at the beginning. I know it's traditionally for a man, but if a woman wants to cut off all the insecurities and all the bullshit, split a tab with them or just alternate if you go out a few times. Uh, Mm -hmm. And definitely take as much time as possible and do not ever have sex. Things can happen, don't get me wrong. But the longer you truly wait to, I think, pull around, because once you actually go and have sex, obviously, regarding first, third date, whatever it is, Things are never actually the same after that. Correct. That's kind of one of the things I would definitely be very aware of. I'm so glad to hear you say that, Rich, coming from a man and a a man that coaches men. And I've said the same thing for women. Now, I don't know. I'm hearing down here in Florida, and I hear it's going on all over. Like some men have this expectation, well, by the third date, you better be sleeping with me. If I really like you, it better be the fifth date. I'm like, well, who wrote that rule? It certainly wasn't a woman. And if the women are out there doing that, my gosh, no wonder there's nobody having quality relationships because this is what we call hookup culture. Everyone's just sleeping around and uh, I live down in Palm Beach County, but I have to keep up the HIV statistics for my psychotherapy license and Broward County is one of the highest HIV areas in the country. So if people are just sleeping around and thinking it's okay, they're going to get sick. There's of course the other STDs and everything else, but even the self-respect factor. I don't know these people. Like why would you think you have to be sexual with someone on a third date? It's ridiculous. You know, you kind of mentioned earlier, though, like men looking at a woman, like a more attractive woman. But I think what's happening now more than ever with dating websites or apps, it's kind of an even playing field. When women do, though, accept to go on a date with somebody now, a lot Mm -hmm. of times they do know what that person looks like, right? Obviously, and I do think they're attracted to that person. So maybe before randomly, if you met somebody in a bar somewhere else, you may not know if you were that attracted to them. But now with social media and things, you may be looking at photos of that person even after accepting to go on a date. There's all these different elements now. So when they kind of go on a date, I think they're both kind of in a situation where they're kind of really both attracted to one another, right? It's not about the conversation as much sometimes is about the sexuality, I guess you could say, of kind of wanting one another. You know, a lot of men, I'd hate to say this, when it comes to dating, a lot of things, like say there's a video game. 
game console, right? And then yeah. men are interested in the console a lot of times, right? Like a woman, but they are interested in playing the game and sex is the game. Yeah. So they're interested in getting to the sex. And then once they have sex with that person, then they kind of like to move on and try another game. As horrible as that sound, that's kind of what a lot of men do. But I also think women do that as well. I think there's a lot of testing going on. Right, because it's so easy on both ends. I think women are having are sex to too. hope, hope to, to attract the guy to have love. Women use sex to get the love and hopefully the relationship. I don't think they're doing it for sport or a game. Yeah. You agree? Yeah, and I yeah. think more it's but the I guy do, for the conquest. For the guy, a lot of times. But I think some men definitely want I, the relationship. I think you can tell over time if they're sincere. And I have told some men, look, if you're looking to sleep around, I'm not your girl. You know, and they usually say, hey, I don't care. I'll hang in there for as long as you want. I think you're amazing. If I hear that kind of response, I know I've got the right kind of guy. Right. It's women. The old saying is women are the gatekeepers. You know, it's a very old saying, but it's still true. Don't get men do love the chase. They're cavemen. They're hunters. They do like the chase. Sure, they'll take the sex. They're not going to throw it away. But ladies, if you really want a love relationship, you make them wait. You make fall in love with each other, get to know each other, you become friends, you become buddies, you have fun together, you laugh together, you go get crazy together. Those experience build towards the love bonding. But Rich, answer this, because a lot of women want to know this. Why do men ghost? Yeah, so I put some stuff on my notes regarding that one, because I want to make sure I really got into that one here. Okay. Um, let me look at this really quick here, because when you say ghost, you mean after they have sex, do they disappear? Kind of? Is well, that what you're saying? It can be after sex or they're like telling you, oh, I'm crazy about you. I'm falling in love with you. I think you're amazing. And they have three dates, four dates, and all of a sudden they just disappear. And, and everything seemed great. And women are like, I don't get it. I don't know what happened. And they're questioning themselves over and over again, what went wrong, blah, blah, blah. And everything seemed to be going right, but they just disappear. I just wanted to see your, what your take on it was as a man. All right. I think for one, a lot of men are not always interested in being in a relationship, right? Because I don't think a lot of men, I can't say all of them, but a lot of men don't feel a form of loneliness. They also can have sex without being in love, obviously, and so can a woman. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that women, you know, it goes both ways. But for the most part, I think back to a lot of times, men are testing the waters to see who likes them, right? Mm -hmm. And if they notice that a woman does like them or is willing to have sex with them, that's, it's kind of an accomplishment, I think, a lot of times. And then if they don't have sex with them, it's a rejection component, if that kind of makes so, sense, too. So they're like, so, okay, well, that's enough time and energy. If she's not going to be intimate with me, I'm not interested, I'm out. Yeah, if you look at most men, if they're not going to reject sex, like you said, most of the time, if they're interested in that person, right? Yeah. But men a lot of times are constantly dealing with rejection, and I don't think women realize that, especially starting from a young age. Women are the ones who are always being the ones pursued, right? Right. And for the most part, and men are the ones who are pursuing, but you don't realize all the rejection and all the, uh, the fear that goes along with having to be the one always going after someone, right? Like you said, we are hunters, not in a form of hunting, but we are hunting. Yeah. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. we deal with a lot of rejection. And then what happens, I think, is they don't feel desired. Right. To a certain degree. Okay. They all of a sudden, I think maybe I'm sliding into the friend zone or maybe she doesn't like me as much as I thought she was. Again, they're basing things maybe on sex when they shouldn't be. Again, that's why I teach they my program. Be. I believe yeah. the longer, the better. Because too much of relationships at the beginning, the middle, even at the end, they're all really based around sex, which is funny because that's probably the least thing you will do in your relationship over time. Sex is actually the smallest component of your relationship, but it's very interesting how at the beginning, there's almost like, when is this going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Why is it not happening? And then once you get into it, why isn't it happening more? Or <laughs> is it not, you know, why all is it, you know, you know what I mean? We're not doing yeah. it as much or you know what I mean? There's all these insecurities and fears always revolving around sex. Are they cheating on me? Are they not? Are they not interested in me anymore? Was it not that good? There's all these yeah. components. And it's kind of exhausting. But as far as ghosting, yeah. I, you know, a lot of women carry a lot of baggage they talk about, you know, but they don't a lot of times think about all the baggage men are carrying. And it really comes down to, I think, is rejection and fear. It's, and it's mm -hmm. also, and I hate to say it, it's a really even playing field, but Men now more than ever can go on social media. They can connect with hundreds of people on Facebook. They can connect with a lot of people through even texting. So if you want to go out tonight with somebody, I can hit up 10 girls and you can ask them to go out. And most likely one, two, mate, you can go out with. If this person isn't giving you the attention you want and you start getting insecure, they're going to move on to somebody else because I think they start to feel rejected. And again, 
not only sex, but it could be anything. They may think they're you know, sliding back into the friend zone or maybe she found someone else or whatever the case may be. Is there a lot of men out in today's world that want the exclusive relationship, in your opinion? And how do women find those guys? Well, I think they do, but they have to be ready for it. If a young man wants to start having children, and he's like, you know what, I really, like I did, I wanted to have kids at a young age, then I was ready to get married and have children. But hypothetically, right. if he's not really ready to have children or get married, and I'm not saying he's not looking for a relationship, most guys aren't really, I think, that's not one of their top priorities, especially now more than ever. There's so many distractions, but I think a lot of men are more interested in making money, having a certain amount of money by the time they get in a relationship. Whatever their desires are a lot of times, they're thinking of. So I have friends that are like, you know what? I want to have a home first before I get in a serious relationship or get married. I want this type of sports car before I have this. I want to travel and do this and that before that. So I think I agree. I agree. I think a man is socialized to be the caretaker of the family and he wants to be financially set before he marries that girl. I, I do believe that they're raised to be that. And if they're not, they don't feel ready. I do agree with that. And women saying to be a good partner, be ready financially. Don't come to a guy with debt, you know, make sure you're in a career that you like. Everything should be settled in your life. It shouldn't be chaotic or high drama. You should have time available to dedicate to your partner or weekends and so on. Yeah, I mean, I agree that they have to be ready for sure. There are men that want the exclusive relationships. And I think those guys really do make a point to tell the women that they do. I think you can, you can tell by their actions more than anything in the way they talk, how they bring you around their family members. That's all yes. kind of, again, you should be holding out on sex because if somebody truly wants you to be in their life, especially long term or wants to be in a relationship with you, they're going to slowly but surely start bringing you around their friends, their family members, their colleagues. That's what's going to kind of show that they're interested in a relationship, having sex with someone and then wondering and then i'm not saying it can't grow from there but if you think sex is going to what's going to launch it into a relationship atmosphere Mm -hmm. i think you're kind of mistaken a lot of times perfect i totally agree with you and how do a man or women best handle rejection my instruction to my clients is if someone's not right for you you just be kind and loving and say you're a very nice person i just don't think we're a match oh and if you've had a few dates you can say goodbye god bless and good luck i hope you find love you can do it in a very kind way you know I think people should be a little bit more spiritually grounded in releasing someone that they've dated in a kind and loving way. How do you suggest that they handle rejection? Yeah, so this is probably the strongest component I go into. I have a Mastering Self-Confidence program now. It's called the Must Have Guide to Finding a Woman or Women of Your Dreams, even if you get to a bad breakup or divorce. The truth is we're always dealing with rejection, right? I mm-hmm. mean, for the most part, people aren't going to realize that what have most likely you've done, you've moved on to the next. And I don't need to have to do this with people. But I'm saying in life, most likely a lot of times you may have not gotten what you thought you deserved. Even in the workplace, you may have not gotten into college you thought you wanted to go. To. You may have not gotten to live where you want to live. You may have been rejected numerous times, which you have been. You just may have mm-hmm. not noticed, but you were very right. tough regarding that. But when it comes to relationships, all of a sudden, people fall apart. Because they take it very personal and it's egotistical, right? It's an ego. You're hurting my ego. And for some reason, a lot of people think when they get rejected or hurt that the whole world knows about it or sees it or feels it. When the truth is everyone's busy with their own love life. (laughs) I agree with that. Right? Yes. Yeah. We all deal with all different aspects of our life with rejection, right? And like I said, when someone says no, you have to say next. There's no other way. You have to become thick skinned, right? I can't say it's easier for men than women, but men are kind of programmed that they are constantly getting rejected. But I think a lot of times with women that I've noticed, when they start getting rejected, it's a little more emotional because a lot of times they're ones being pursued, especially if they're attractive. A lot of times they can kind of maneuver, get kind of what they want a lot of times, or they're used to it, especially when dating certain people, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they're in the driver's seat all the time, but for the most part, I do believe that. I think I yeah, think it's really uh, the degree of the childhood trauma that each person has. You know, if there was like a lot around trauma number seven, which is personal trauma with bullying, being bullied, not feeling good enough, not feeling pretty enough, handsome enough, athletic enough as a kid, those wounds can run really deep. And this is who I help men and women that, you know, have had past childhood trauma. So once we work together, my people are saying at first they would have been devastated or if the guy left and they're crying, they can't get over for months. And now it's like, okay, now. Next, 
You know, they learn not to take it personally. If they really feel they were good hearted and did the best they can, we all realize everyone has a type, which we call a love map. And a love map is somebody who, if you think back to when you were a child, the very first crush you had, you know, mine was a little Italian boy. So I like darker hair, dark eyes. You know, that's just my love map. And right. a lot of times it'll be the coloring of your opposite sex parent. If you're a little boy and you had a blonde, blue eyed mom, that's usually the kind of girl you might want to go after or your first crush. Everyone has a type and my people learn to say, okay, well, maybe I just wasn't their type. It's okay. I don't take that personally. It's all right. Next. <laughs> you know. So, but that does take some yeah, education. A lot of actors I go through that with when they would get rejected for parts. I'm like, well, I directed films. If they're looking for a specific person in That's mind, right. don't be upset. It was because they're looking for that. You may have not been that. They gave you a shot. But here's the thing that I think a lot of people don't realize and I teach my guys that is that a lot of rejection, you don't realize how many bullets you've dodged a lot of times by getting rejected or not getting involved with certain people. They only look at like, oh my God, look what I lost, right? But as you mm -hmm. know, a lot of people you may end up with come with a lot of baggage. And later, right. sometimes you even find that out, like, oh my God, I didn't know they were this type of person. Could be an alcoholic, could be a drug addict, could be mental issues. But you yeah. didn't know it at the time, but you thought like, oh my God, this was the one and only, right? So they're crushed. Yeah, the loss of a dream. You know, the, the dream that they invested right. in, the loss of the dream is what's upsetting. I think that is a big part of it. Or the person I thought they were, I fell in love with their potential and they didn't match up to their potential. And now I'm disappointed. So it's the loss of that dream. Yeah, you're back to the ego being hurt, which then in turn makes you afraid. And then you feel embarrassed. And then is what I call, then you get paralyzed, which means now you're afraid to make a move, right? Because of what mm. happened in the past. By being rejected, now you're scared. Now you're afraid to do anything else. And I've been through that even in the film industry. Like I kept getting rejected, trying to do these things rejected. And then either you're getting more angry or you're getting more depressed. That's right. This is how I help my models and actors as a talent agent. I used to say spiritually, if you didn't get that part, the next one is supposed to be yours and it's going to be better. Even the next one will be better. And it's the same way you can look at it as a partner. Okay. If they don't want to be with you, that's perfectly fine. The next one you're going to meet is even going to be better. So spiritually, you're able to just let that go and just wish them well. And if you let them go spiritually with kindness and with love, then you really don't feel like negative or guilty or bad in any way. It's just, it's okay. I wish you well. And if people can learn to do that more often, it would be a much kinder world out there in, in single land. If everybody were more kinder when it comes to just saying, just say, I don't think we're right for each other, but I think you're a lovely person. It's all right. Instead of ghosting and just walking away and being disrespectful. That's the part I don't like. You don't need to disrespect or be unkind to someone if you just don't think you're a match, right? I agree. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. And then, oh, I had this other question. If a man cheats on his mm -hmm. woman, do you believe he's going to cheat again? I mean, once a cheater, always a cheater. Is that a personality flaw? I know. When you sent this question, I saw it. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Because, you know, sometimes <laughs> me and you, when we discuss things, we agree with one another. But then other times we couldn't be so far in the other part because I, I – you I know. Are, that's why I, I like having really, you as a guest. Come on, Rich. <laughs> yeah, you you really are the lovey-dovey. And it's funny when I even heard at the beginning, I'm like, this is so loving and nurturing. And I kind of find myself sometimes being more brutal. And I call sometimes even people thinking they're in love like a spell, which I'm not saying any. I mean, I, I love the concept of love. I think God is love. My cousin actually yeah. just told me that God's not a man or woman. He's love. I was like, wow, that's pretty right. interesting. But when it comes to cheating now, and I get brutal on this subject because uh, I think for the most part, most people have cheated in their life. They've cheated on someone. And I'm not calling everyone a cheater out there, all right? I don't want you mm -hmm. to think okay. that. But a lot more do than don't, all right? There's like 7 billion of us out there, and I can assure right. you billions of them are cheating. And then for anyone, a man or a woman walking around pretending or condemning cheaters a lot of times is ridiculous because most likely through their life, they cheated at one time or another in their life. Again, I'm not saying everybody, but a majority have, I can assure you. I'm not saying they did it when they were married. I think it's four out of five men is the stats and three out of five women. I think that's the latest statistics I saw. Two, they may have not cheated themselves, but they were with somebody they knew was with someone else, right? Or they pursued that person. Again, does that fall under a cheater? I don't know, but I still, I'm going to call bullshit on a lot okay. of people because it's their behavior. And what really aggravates me about cheaters is, is let's say if you were a cheater, right, and you never got caught or whatever, but 
if you got caught cheating, you always want to be forgiven. But if you cheated and got caught cheating, you want to be forgiven. But then if you were cheated on, you want to condemn that person. Yes, right? I have seen they this with a lot of couples acknowledge- in my practice. Yes, I've seen this. <laughs> mm-hmm. right? So kind of a catch-22 with that. But I think people really have to be honest with themselves before you get in a relationship or even if you're in a relationship, you have to look at that person and say, you know, what would I do if this person cheated on me? Because what it all comes down to is behavior. Most likely, I'm not saying you're going to cheat on this person or they're going to cheat on you. But if it does happen, really, how are you going to behave? Through? Are you really just going to say it's over? Like, okay, we live together or we're, we're this or that. Now it's over. Maybe, maybe not. Mm-hmm. But I think mm-hmm. the fear a lot of times thinking always about someone cheating on you or vice versa, again, paralyzes you. Or that yeah, it's going to make again. it crazy. Yeah. Go enjoy your life. You will never ever, ever be able to control what someone else does to you in your life, right? Thank you. you. I love that. Yes. You can't control three feet outside of you, right? That's the famous marine thing, three or four feet. I can't control anything. And the truth is you may get cheated on. And probably in relationships, you may not even know it if you had passed. You probably were cheated on. You don't know it. And Mm -hmm. again, you may have cheated and never told anyone. Mm -hmm. But the truth is we all have to understand we're human beings. No one is perfect, especially in a relationship. There are going to come down to times where you are embarrassed, your ego is hurt. Why did they do this to me? And all these different things come up. Uh, Was I not giving them enough sex? Was I not giving them enough attention? Was I this? Was I that? It happened. You're not going back in life. You have to live for the future. So you really, I think, and I went through this to say, you know, if someone cheats on me, this is how I handle it. This is exactly as hard as it is right now and I may be a little more upset than I'm feeling right now there's no question about that because for the most part people don't like to be cheated on but no one is perfect you sometimes you know I'm, I find you know, a lot get, of double standards when I have couples come in uh, and if the man's cheated you know the guy looks at her and says oh come on it's not that big of a deal just forgive me I said I was sorry like that but if the woman cheats the guy is like crazy, you know, he mm-hmm. won't forgive her. He's pounding, he's cursing, he's having temper tantrums, he's depressed. I mean, it's like 10 times amount of reaction. But if the woman cheated, he's like, oh, just get over it. I saw that constantly. Why is there such that big diversification? Well, I think you crushed the man's ego. I think when it really comes down to it, women, women, women have, egos. have obviously two. Uh, <laughs> and what it is is, He's more embarrassed if somebody else, I think, I may be wrong, finds out that somebody else got his girlfriend or his wife and she went behind his back to do this. I yeah. think it's more related to that than it is personally a lot of times. Because the truth is, like, say someone cheated on him, he can go out and cheat on her because getting sex now isn't that complicated, right? Mm-hmm. For the most part. But a lot of times I think women do eventually cheat on a man because. Most of the time that I've known a woman, they check out because they're more emotional driven, I think. Once yes. they mostly check out on the man, they're out. And what I think the man realizes is she's out. She mm-hmm. emotionally gave herself to somebody else. It's just not sexually where a man will say, hey, it's just sex. Because like I was telling you earlier, I think men can have sex without being in love or having. To well, be I think that, women can too. Or, or but when you're in an exclusive of couple. They can. Yeah, I think women do want to feel nurtured and cherished, treated well. And I think most women will be honorable to that man. But if he starts treating her rude or ignores her or plays golf all weekend or whatever it is and barely gives her any time and attention, she may have that affair just looking for that loving kindness, that kind of respect, that nurturing. And then it may lead to sex where guys might just go for the sex first and not want the nurturing. They're hoping, oh, yeah, can I have sex and get away with it? And nobody will know. You know, where women, it's not usually a fast decision. It's more if they may even try talking to their husbands and saying, look, I'm not happy. Can we have more quality time together, more dating time? And if he doesn't, after trying to talk to him two or three times, and she may find the attention of someone else to get that nurturing that she wants. And then the man is shocked that she had an affair. Funny, I find uh, couples that came to me were having affairs with women through Facebook like old boyfriends or old people that they knew in from high school. Yeah, and men would rather be with a stranger, have the sex hit and run is what I call the mm-hmm. one of those a hit and run so no, hopefully nobody finds out. And maybe they feel that they're not getting enough sex at home, so they'll do that. Or they might want some of the nurturing too. I don't know what your take is on that. Well, I think a lot of men will cheat because 
either one they're being pursued and there's a famous saying you can run so far before you pull a hamstring that's kind of a joke but uh, um okay. if, if men are being a lot of men aren't used to being pursued and if somebody i'll throw it out there say somebody is pursuing them that's very attractive for a lot of men it's hard to reject them and i think though with a lot of women too if they get pursued by somebody who they find more attractive than who they're with or treating them better or they think they have something more in common or maybe even a future with i think that happens obviously as well but my theory with cheating in general is none of us and i mean none of us live the same life right none Mm -hmm. of us have the same type of relationship None of us have the same lives. Emotionally, we all feel different at different times. We don't know everything that somebody else goes through. You only kind of know what you went through. And it can be something that happened one year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. Maybe not even this relationship that made you go out and cheat. Maybe, again, you thought somebody was cheating when they weren't, and then you went and cheated. I mean, there's a million different things. Yeah. But it all comes down to respect and behavior. Right. Yeah. If you know yes. the person you're with doesn't want you to cheat, then you know the game. If you know they're kind of loosey goosey, like, oh, he's a cheater and he can do whatever he wants, he's this or that, then that's another type of component. You know, I but just say, go know- to your partner and say, look, I'm not happy. We're not as, as intimate as I would like to be. Can we pick up the romance factor? I mean, have a conversation. You should love your partner enough to treat them with that kind of respect before you go off and get sneaky. That's my opinion. I on agree. It. Yeah. I agree. But I think a lot of people are sneaky and they want to test the waters before they commit too, right? I mean, that's the reality of that. Men and women, they don't want to necessarily lose what they have sometimes. They'll be like, oh, let me see how it works with this or let me see how I feel about that. Do you think that that's the premise behind breadcrumbing? Have you heard that term? Yeah. That's uh, okay. That's in dating where they just give you a little bit enough or they just text you once a week and just kind of keep you on the mm-hmm. leash, but don't really give you enough time and attention. I say women to my ladies, I'm like, just keep going. You don't need somebody wasting your time. Some women just hold on for the breadcrumbs when it comes to dating. Oh, but yeah. I, I like them and I'll hear from them once a week. And I'm like, nah, that's not a relationship. You know, it's, keep going. Keep dating. I'm just wondering your thought on that. I, I don't think the guy's that interested if that's what he's doing or he has several on his his leash at that point. Yeah. I always think if a I guy mean, it, really yeah. digs you, he's going to tell you like, wow, I really think you're great. Can we try dating exclusively? I, I want to spend more time with you. They have always told me. So I, I've seen it and it happens. And that's what I say to my ladies. Just keep dating until that one person steps up and says, I want to see where this goes. I think you're wonderful. Let's keep dating and let's date exclusively. And I think the man will tell you that when he's really interested. I do, too. I think what happens with women with dating is they fall under different classifications. You have the serial daters, which is obviously a woman that's just always going on dates, I think, to a certain degree, trying to get free meals or kind of just somebody. Do you really think women are dating to get free meals? We can buy our own meals. I don't think they're doing it. I think think they're dating to find the one. I do think think a lot of women go out with men because they want to go to certain places, younger girls especially, that they can't afford to go to. And I do think they go on a lot of dates telling men that's where they want to go, and they'll go. I okay. really do. Huh. Yeah, I do, definitely. I definitely do think that. But there's a joke amongst guys. Like, if you're if it's over $40, you'll see the woman dip into her cell phone. And 40 and under, they'll treat. 40 and over, they'll dip into their cell phone waiting for you to treat or something. Like, there's a funny thing regarding that. But that's a different component. But I think <laughs> women just have to realize that it's not just about dating. It's about meeting again and going to different places to meet a bunch of different men that have the things that she's interested in having. It's not just about dating. So again, if you're interested in whatever you're interested in, I don't care if it's photography, hypothetically, start going and meeting people there. You don't have to date them and then start doing group things and working your way that way. And even if the person you're meeting there isn't for you, they may know somebody else that is. And you kind of maneuver your way that way, not maneuver your way by always just going out on dinner dates, because I truthfully, I think a lot of that is performing, I call it, where you're just kind of performing. You're across from one another. But I also think women get scared because they don't want to be known as somebody who's constantly going out on dates because how people Hmm. perceive them. I tell them keep dating till they find the one. So we can agree to disagree on this one, Rich. (laughs) But my friend, I love and adore you. You know that. We always have a great, lively conversation. And I can't wait for you to be a part of the VIP women's group experience for the three-day event I'll be having in Fort Lauderdale. These are people coming in from around the world. It's a women's group. And you can find out about the masterclass that's happening November 5th. That's a Monday at 12 noon. 
be on the masterclass to get the details. And it's called Successful in Business but Struggle in Love. It is a masterclass for women. Uh, the invitation will be on my Facebook page, Coach Rihanna Milne. And you'll see all the announcements of everything that's coming up and going on. Next week, we have another amazing guest who will also be at the event, Dr. Jane Gwynn, my sex and intimacy coach. And we're going to be talking also her opinion as a female, why do partners cheat, how to best recover from an affair, how can women get back in touch with their sexual desire after an abusive relationship. Rich, again, I thank you so much for your kindness and your wisdom in joining us tonight. Thank Thank you. We have to sign off, guys. I'm sorry. We're out of time. You're listening to Lessons in Life and Love with your life and love coach, Rihanna Milne, and we will see you next week. We want to thank you for joining us on this episode of Lessons in Life and Love with Coach Rihanna Milne. Your personal journey of life and love transformation has only just begun. Go to RihannaMilne.com for more resources. And if you're really ready to take action to improve your life or love situation, apply now for a free life and love transformation discovery session with Rihanna, a $500 value. Just contact Rihanna with your questions and to tell her your story at RihannaMilne.com. And remember, it's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve.